Hello, how are we doing? Um, so, <coughs> I wouldn't say by popular demand, but by um, frequent requests, I decided to reopen my YouTube channel. I, I only made one video when I originally started, and then I got bored. YouTube was very clunky at the time um, I tried to join it. Um, I will say this video is purely for YouTube. It's not going on TikTok because it'll be too long. Um, it's not going on Instagram. Um, it's I'll share a link to my Facebook or of this on my Facebook so people can watch it. It's a reintroduction of myself um, to YouTube and I hope you enjoy it. Um, it's probably very boring to many people, but it is going to start this one with just a brief explainer on what spiritualism is. Um, and I suppose a, a tiny bit of who I am. Um, you will notice on some of the um, YouTubers recently, they shared a video of me where I said I don't really know what it is to explain about who I am. Um, and it was quite um, important, that, apparently. So I would just say I am Jason Rothwell. Um, I am 33 years old, as many people know, and I, before the end of this year, I will be older. Um, I have been a spiritualist for seven-ish years nearly, I think. Um, I am a member of the Spiritualist National Union, which is the largest body of spiritualists in the country. Um, I am a socialist. Kill me for that, you know. I was big up Jeremy Corbyn. Um, I'm not saying I agreed with Jeremy Corbyn, but it was the best thing that we could have had for me as a socialist. Um, as many people seem to try to point out on YouTube, I've noticed, um, either politely or not so politely, I am homosexual. Um, I have lived with a man um, and been in love with a man for the better part of a decade. Um, surprise! Um, surprise. I have been aware that there is a spirit world since I was about five years old, albeit I didn't really do anything with it until I was 27. Um, I am a bit weird as well. I have noticed this on watching people discuss me on YouTube. I am quite eccentric, um, possibly slightly emotionally imbalanced. Um, I don't mind that. I have always been a little bit out there, um, probably don't fit in very well, um, slightly socially awkward, I'm not overly keen on human beings, um, I love them in a universal sense but humans scare me, um, they act largely from an emotional place that doesn't allow for logic, um, I'm not saying I am the most logical person in the world but I, I, I don't, I, I admit I'm a bit weird. Um, I do have teddies in my house still and I dress a bit random. I have these on at the moment because I dressed up in drag for my friend's birthday the other week. Um, anything else we need to cover? I'm gay, I'm a socialist, I'm a spiritualist, I'm a bit weird. Um, formerly a pagan, um, originally, um, I found God in paganism when I was a teenager. Um, I have always, always had a deep sense of faith that there is a God in the world and that I can feel that God. Um, I don't believe we can die. I believe that life lasts forever. I, I refuse um, to believe that this is it um, and I know it isn't I know the truth of it in my truth um, I also would say if you do not believe in everlasting life if you do not believe in God that's absolutely fine um, I find it curious that atheists um, have an issue with people believing in God I have no issue with people not believing in God um, I am not here to convert you I'm not like the knock knock people who come knocking on your door lovely though they are really good people um, I'm not here to convert you. Um, I think that's it on me. I come from Castleton in the north of England, um, in the north of Manchester, 
just off the edges of the Pennines. Not my greatest boast. It's a little town called Rochdale, famous for a few things. Not many of them good, apart from it did give birth to the Industrial Revolution. Um, Robert Owen, who is the um, one of the founding sort of voices of spiritualism, came from Rochdale. Um, my family come from all over the country and uh, that's not really relevant, but never mind. Um, I would also just probably say I came into spiritualism um, at a time when I was experiencing extreme emotional trauma. Um, I was going through uh, immense repressed grief and I was very, I think I was becoming very unstable. Not because of the spirit world either. Nothing to do with hearing voices or anything was making me unstable. I was unstable because of the noise in the world. Um, so that's me. Some of you may have seen and some of you may not have seen my picture in the media over the past month. I'm sure whenever you watch this, it may be longer than that, but you'll have seen me pointing at a river over the last month. Um, I will not really be discussing that topic on this channel. Um, I have spoke to the people who need to be spoken to on that topic. Um, I may need to speak to them again at some point if they wish, but I have spoken to the people who need to know. Um, the powers that be, um, meaning the establishment, um, people who have connections to that issue, um, I have spoken there and I have said what needs to be said, answered what needs to currently be answered. Um, there may be in time room to discuss the spiritual aspect of the events of the last month, but such as it is, um, that's not this topic. I, I have no interest in discussing that further. Um, and I apologise if any of you do have questions on that particular issue. Um, it's just not to be discussed and yeah yeah that's all I need to say on that um, so what is spiritualism what is spiritualism um, spiritualism is a nationally recognized religion it has been um, around for about 200 years um, it came together from a joining of different uh, schools of thought spiritualist thinking theosophist thinking um, and new age, new world thinking. Um, it is a nationally recognised religion. It is um, divided amongst numerous bodies. The largest body is the Spiritualist National Union. If you ever see the word SNU written on a church, it means National Spiritualist Union, um, which is a huge collection, a global connection of churches that have joined together. They pool resources, um, they vote together, stick together, they elect a president um, to guide their movement, um, the current one being uh, Minister Jackie Wright, who was elected last year, her, her predecessor, Mr David Bruton, um, they has been presidents of the Spiritualist Union for decades, centuries now. Um, there are others, there are. there is the New World, there is the Christian Spiritualists, um, the National Association of Spiritualists, I'm sure there's an International Association of Spiritualists somewhere. Um, there are churches in America, there are churches in uh, Australia, New Zealand, there are churches all across England, Wales, Scotland, a few in Ireland. Um, if you want to go on Facebook, or go on Google, you can type in Spiritualist Churches, local to me, and it will bring them up. There are hundreds of them. And not just um, churches, there are centres as well, Spiritualist Centres. Some of them members of the union, some of them members of another body, some of them independent, where just some nice people have decided they wanted to start a Spiritualist Night, a Spiritualist Church, Centre, what have you. Um, I would say it's important to remember that the word spiritualist is just a word. It's a word similar to saying you are a Christian. It's a word similar to saying you are a Jew, a pagan, a Hindu, 
Muslim, Buddhist, Taoist, um, shamanist, etc. It's just a word. It doesn't do anything other than describe what your religious view is. Um, in spiritualism, the founding principle is that whilst we may experience physical death, our bodies are the host of a spirit. We are an incarnate spirit. A body of energy exists within us using our physical form to give itself life and shape and action. And when we meet our physical death, we move from this world, this incarnate world, into a discarnate world, into an immaterial realm made of energy, of love, light and vibration. Um, there is a science behind spiritualism, if you want to study it. There is a science based on the notion of energy and vibrations, um, that we all create vibrations, we are all made of energy, and if you uh, listen closely you can hear it. Um, so the guiding principle of spiritualism is, you cannot die for the life that is within you, and when you do die, you will move on into um, an immaterial world. Now, those, that immaterial world um, in Christianity is known as heaven. In Islam, I believe, is known as Jannah. Buddhism, it is Nirvana, Shangri-La. Um, in many other religions, there are different words for this place. There is Elysium, Valhalla, uh, Eden, Avalon, all sorts paradise the oneness the source the god force that is what we do when we die we go to this great link where we join with god anyone watched avatar um a brilliant film we when we die we rejoin ewa the energy of the world of the universe of the cosmos and um, for many spiritualists that is only the basic principle of our belief that you cannot die and life is eternal from that belief we then have a bigger goal in mind a bigger goal it is not to enforce the will of any god it is not to reap material reward it is not to enforce any law or religious practice um, other than natural law, natural law being how the universe works, gravity, death, time, light, darkness, um, evolution, natural law, sickness, etc. Um, the greater goal is using that belief in eternal life to encourage people to live a better life this time around. If you can find the truth that you are an eternal spirit being living through a physical vessel, then perhaps you can be free to live a happier life, free of the worries of the material world, free of worrying about paying bills, free of worrying about emotional traumas and um, allow yourself to heal, to grow, to develop, to be um, happy. As I mentioned to myself yesterday, my initial belief in God was a God who, when I was a teenager into early adulthood, I would go to church and I would get on my knees, I would bend my knees and cross my hands, close my eyes, cross myself, and I would say, God be merciful, God be kind, God be helpful, God be protective, God guide me, God love me, God, you know, lead me show me the way make these bad things not happen be just be good please protect me from evil um forgive me forgive me for the wrong do things i have done please release me from shame and guilt what god wants for us god wants us to be joyous to rejoice in the power of god um, not God in the Christian sense, but God, the creator of the universe, that which put the sun, the moon, the stars in the sky, that made the oceans, that made the seas, that made the rivers, that made the earth and the mountains, the forests, all the animals that live upon our earth. Rejoice in the beauty of the diversity of our people on earth. Um, that regardless of 
any division. We are one people united, aiming for a united world that can live in peace and joy and prosperity together, free from the fear of death, free from the fear that ignorance brings with it, free from the fear of sickness and need and want, uh, hunger. So, let us just put a couple of other thoughts across. Spiritualists, people could ask me this, do we believe in God? I think I've answered that. Yes, we do. In whatever form God takes to you, if you believe in um, Jehovah, Hashem, Allah, if you believe in Krishna or Brahma, Ganesha, Shiva, Parvati, Lakshmi, if you believe in Buddha, if you believe in Wakanatanka, if you believe in Isis or Hathor, Osiris, Anubis, Odin, uh, Thor, Frega, if you believe in Zeus or Neptune, Poseidon, Hera, Hestia, Demeter, if you believe in Bridget or uh, Nimue, Ellen, whatever, whatever, whatever you call God, all gods come from one God. This one God is an unknowable God because it's so vast. Um, I will use a Hebrew word to describe this one God. He is Bi Rashi Elohim Adonai. I am the beginning. I am. I am the first. The source of all things. It is not male. It's not female. It is not anything. It is the omnipresent force of the universe who, as it comes into contact with the material world, takes on the forms of all these gods and goddesses that we as humans worship, make statues of, build churches for, blah, 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 have messiahs for. Do spiritualists believe in Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Nazarene? Um, mostly, yes. Do we believe that he is the living son of God? Do we believe that he is the Messiah, the Emmanuel, that he is um, the Adonai made flesh? No, not really. We believe that Jesus was a very powerful healer, a very powerful prophet, a very powerful um, medium worker of different forms of mediumship. Miraculous, yes, but divine, only as divine as you or me. Um, and that is the other point. You and me, we are divine. The light, the living light of God flows through us and we are the embodiment of life expressing itself in a physical form. Um, what happens at a spiritualist church? Bearing in mind you can go on uh, Facebook and find spiritualist churches. You probably can go on Twitter as well. Um, you certainly can go on Google. If you go on the SNU's website, they will have a directory, a list of all the churches in the country, and you can find out when they have services. Most churches are three or four pounds to enter. Um, and in a service, what you will get is you will get some a prayer, an opening prayer, some hymns. We do healing, um, sending out our light. Um, to the universe to help those who are in need, some more music. Then usually we have a little bit of philosophy. It can be good sometimes, philosophy. It can be rubbish sometimes. I have seen some incredible speakers and I've seen some dismal speakers. Uh, and, you know, each to their own. Some people's good is other people's bad and some people's bad is other people's good. Um, one man's treasure is another man's trash, as they say. Um, and then... In almost all spiritualist services, um, we have what we call communion, where a medium, myself, many, many others, are wonderful mediums all over the country, um, will try to commune and provide evidence of everlasting life from your friends, your family, your loved ones who have passed into that discarnate world and perhaps give you some messages or guidance in where your life is at the moment and how it needs to sort of progress. Uh, admittedly, spirits have opinions too and their opinions are not always right. Um, they are just like you or I. 
Yes, they may be joined with the one God. Yes, their higher self may be free to move within the divine energy, to move outside of time and space, but they are nevertheless part of a human context. And, and, and so when they offer you advice, um, it may not necessarily be worth taking, but it nevertheless is there. I can honestly say I do not pay attention to my family in the spirit world very often, possibly more now than I did when they were alive, uh, but I don't pay much attention to them. I'm not going to go on and on forever. I have seen YouTube videos that last for two and a half hours and I don't know how people do it because I get sick of the sound of my own voice. In spiritualism though, in Christianity, you have the Ten Commandments. Uh, in most religions, you have, you know, like the Eightfold Path. Uh, you have the Torah, uh, the Quran, teachings and uh, laws to follow. In spiritualism, we have seven principles that we have in our churches. And I won't explain them, but there is a wonderful book you can buy on the Spiritualist National Union's website called The Philosophy of Spiritualism. It's, an, it's a fabulous book. It really is. It's lovely. It's very um, direct, composite, um, but it's well worth a read. The Seven Principles of Spiritualism is the fatherhood of God, that there is one universal power. The brotherhood of man, that regardless of creed or race or sexuality, gender, religion, or any other division, we are all united. One people who live on one earth, who come from one God, one source of power. The communion of spirits and the ministry of angels. This being that you can commune between the two worlds and that there are higher beings out there who watch and guide the progression of mankind and souls as they move forward, including the idea of spirit guides. The continuous existence of the human soul. This is nice and simple. You can't die. You are a spirit living in a physical body, living a physical experience. When that physical experience is ended, that spirit will rejoin the force that goes through all time and space. Like in Star Wars, the force. Personal responsibility. This basically means do unto others as you would have done unto yourself. Nice and simple but also that you are responsible for yourself and your actions and your words. What you do, it belongs to you. Don't do it unless you're willing to own it. Compensation and retribution hereafter for the good and evil deeds done upon the earth. Now, we don't believe in spiritualism of sin. We do not believe there is any reason to be uh, ashamed or guilty. Um, we don't really believe in evil or devils or demons or hell. Um, but we do believe you are responsible for your actions and when you go into the other world, when your physical self has reached its terminus point, you must level with your actions, not, not in any form of judgment, but you must process why you have done the things you have done, you must learn from them and, and deal with them and you may... You know, I suppose you could say you may go up or down the scale of learning dependent, but it's a dodgy one. I think it's a dodgy one. Eternal progress open to every human soul. Most spiritualists, most spiritualists, but not all spiritualists, believe in reincarnation. Um, and I say most. It's, it's probably about, you know, 60-40. Um, we believe that you live life after life after life. Spiritualist teaching talks about reincarnation and how we move from one life to the other in the hope of acquiring wisdom as we progress from one lifetime into the next. Until such a time as we have learned all we came upon this earth to do and then we return to the God force, to our soul groups, to our place in the oneness, add our lessons to God's lessons that by our imperfection, God may be more perfect. Before those seven principles were given to us, though, we were given ten laws of right. These ten laws of right speak to me more than anything else. And I, I would just recite them to you. They were given to us by the mother of modern day spiritualism, Emma Hardinge Britton. Um, I'll just read them. I won't go into them too much, but um, I will just read them out to you. And 
They're, they're a method to live by. Number one is manifest temperance in all that you do, be it in physical, mental, moral or affectional or religious. It means don't go over the top. Be balanced, you know, don't do anything with frenzy or zealotry, don't overexert yourself, don't push yourself too far, don't seek to do more than you need to do. Be temperate. Number two, give justice to all creatures. Justice is the exercise of precisely the rules of life, conduct, thought and speech. Do unto others as you would have done unto yourself. I would also say one thing I have noticed recently about justice. It's a beautiful word. But many people claim to act on behalf of justice. And they do injustice in their pursuit of justice. Justice should never cause injustice. Justice is the rightness, writing of injustice. If, if you harm somebody, in the pursuit of the truth, then you are being unjust and therefore you are not supporting the cause of justice. Show gentleness in speech or action. Never say to people things that are deliberately hurtful. Ask yourself if the person can learn from what you have to say. If they are in a place to learn, be kind to them. Be kind to yourself. People are their own worst judge. And, you know, Lord knows, I have beat myself up about things um, over the years that just really didn't need to be beaten up about. Um, have I done good things in my life? Absolutely. Have I done bad things in my life? Most certainly. Does God really care? Not really. You know, you sleep with somebody you shouldn't do. Take drugs drink too much, slap somebody once in your life, um, steal something, does God mind? Not really. Do you mind? Probably. You probably mind more than God does. So be gentle with yourself as well as with others. Uh, number four is to speak the truth. That is all that matters. If it is harsh and unpleasant and is unnecessary, you, know, you don't need to tell this person the truth. Then perhaps you can reserve it for another time. But, but speak the truth and live the truth. God dislikes nothing more than hypocrisy. Um, and you must speak your truth. But you must speak your truth with, rem with it in mind that your truth is not everybody else's truth. There are many versions of the truth. Your truth, their truth, the real one. Exercise charity in thought and striving to excuse the failings of others. Um, be charitable, but be charitable because you want to be, not because it is convenient to be or because you are conscious of being uh, rewarded or congratulated. Just be kind and charitable for the sake of being it. Um, and give people the benefit of the doubt, you know? innocent until proven guilty etc i have done this many times in my life i have sat with people and listened to many uh, of their apparent failings and and i have reserved judgment until such time as i'm in possession of all the facts and even then it is not my place um so be charitable to people in arms giving be generous don't be stingy in what you give if you're going to give give you know, it's like if you go to somebody in the street and they ask you for money. Don't put your hand in your pocket and pull out a quid and put the quid back and pull out a penny. Just give. If you measure the amount that you are giving, you are not truly giving. You are being conscious of the gift and giving it a value that is not the value behind it. The value behind it is wanting to be kind. Number seven is self-sacrifice in all that you do. Um... It basically means do what is right. Yes, you must pay attention to how that may affect you, but do what is right, regardless of anything else in the end. I refer you back to the events of the past month. I have had a lot of detraction over the past 
month and a bit. A lot of people who do not know me claim to have a right to an opinion on who I am. Does that mean um, because of any pain they may have inflicted upon me or any ego triggers they may have pulled that I would change the events of the recent past? Absolutely not. I have done what I have done in my life for the goodness of humanity, for the goodness of individuals. And, and if that has come back on me, then it has done. But you must do what is right. Be temperate. Which means, it's a difficult one, is defend what is right. Defend it. But do so balanced. You know, there's no reason to go off on one screaming and shouting and shooting people and hacking things and going mental and spending hours and hours and hours um, pursuing things madly. Be balanced. You can see what is right or wrong, but sometimes you don't need to act on these things. Sometimes your need to act comes from an emotional need of your own. If you ask yourself why you need to do that, probably find out it's just a trigger inside. Be industrious is number nine, um, which just means work hard, devote your life to what inspires you, to what makes you happy, to do what you love, to do what gives you meaning in the world. And when you do it, do it to the best of your ability. And finally, number 10, manifest love above and be all. Seek to cultivate it in your families and your kindreds, in your friends and amongst all mankind generally. The feeling of that true and tender love, which can think, speak and act no wrong to any creature living upon the earth. Just do things from love. Love is powerful. Love is an opportunity to do good. It is not the certainty of good. And we should never use love as an excuse to do bad things or to excuse bad things. But love offers us an opportunity for a happier, better life. That is spiritualism. There is two pillars to spiritualism, though, when you do enter a church. One is mediumship, um, the belief in communication between the two worlds and providing evidence of continuous life. The other pillar, key pillar of spiritualism is healing. Um, healing nowadays, energetic healing, is well known. It has sprung far and wide outside of uh, spiritualism. It's not just a spiritualist church concept anymore. Lots of people go to energetic healers, go to Reiki healers, um, you know, holistic therapists, etc., well-being experts. Um, in spiritualism, we believe that a healer, somebody who has trained to channel the energies of the universe in through themselves, guided by the spirit into the body of another being, can heal um, ailments of the mind, body and spirit. Mediumship is a form of healing of its own. Um, but it is important to say healing is the other pillar. We have mediumship healing and philosophy. Philosophy at this moment being the smaller of the pillars, but that's just the way the world is. Uh, besides that, is there anything else? Um, it is, I don't know if I've said this already, it is important to remember that a spiritualist medium is just a member of the spiritualist religion. Uh, mediums and psychics, I'm sure I've said this already, mediums and psychics don't necessarily need to be spiritualists to do what they do. The final thing to say, everybody, possesses the ability to be psychic. We all possess it. It is a latent human ability. Um, everybody, to a lesser or greater extent, has the ability to commune mediumistically. Um, I think that's it for now. I think I've said enough. 34 minutes. I'm sick of myself. Don't want to talk too much. It's just a quick rundown on what spiritualism is. Um, and... If any of you do wish to go to church or a centre, psychic night, spiritual night, just look it up on Google, on Facebook, on Instagram, Twitter. Um, you will, I am sure, be directed to where you need to go. Um, Spirit will guide you to the place that you need to go to. And, and you'll have a wonderful time. And when and if you are ready to receive the truth 
of eternal life and the oneness of whatever, then you'll be ready. Um, I do have to just say as well, spiritualists claim to know a truth. Is it the whole truth? Probably not. But it is a truth. A step in the direction of removing the dogma and the negativity that is often attached to religion. Um, the commands of God, the demand of God, the laws you must obey. Um, none of those are to be obeyed. They are just advice. Live by the seven principles, by the fatherhood of God, the brotherhood of man, uh, the communion of spirits and the ministry of angels, personal responsibility, continuous existence of the human soul and eternal progress. They are principles, guidelines. We stand on them, we stand before them, but we do not build our church solely around them. You can disagree with them if you wish, interpret them as you feel you need to. Um, the ten laws of right, I know it uses the word law, but what is wrong with saying be kind, be charitable, be temperate, be generous, come from a place of love, strive for truth and justice. There's nothing wrong in that. I'm sure that is at the heart of all religions. Um, you are welcome to leave comments. You are welcome to like, dislike. You are welcome to share, not share. You're welcome to watch 10 minutes or not at all. Um, You're welcome to leave questions, if you wish, for me to pick up topics on. Um, I find the best way to do these things is to give you what you ask for. Um, with the obvious exclaimer that uh, discussions of the topic of recent times is not something I will accept questions on for the time being. Um, much love, much joy, love and light. Um, rejoice in your di own divine energy. Be one. Find that peace inside your heart. Live in the present moment. Come from a place of presence in the current day. Live your life in a spiritual manner, whatever that is, whatever that entails. You know, 20 pints on a Friday night is not necessarily unspiritual. It, it won't do very good on Saturday morning, but it doesn't mean you are not spiritual. If you F and Jeff and blind, that doesn't mean you are not spiritual. If you... Uh, take drugs, suffer with a mental health illness, um, date 20 people at the same time, um, that's not unspiritual. Who can say what a spiritual life is if we are all spirits living in a human body for a human experience? Then the high points of human existence and the low points of human existence must all come together in the circle to make the perfect God that we are striving for and the perfect world that we are for in the end without judgment. Um, those 10 laws are a good starting place for living a spiritual life, but Lord knows I I am not the perfect spiritualist. Uh, I'm not the perfect spiritual being. I don't think I ever will be, but we can live in hope of uh, better times. I leave you the love and light of the Lord who is your God, of the Lady who is your God, of the I Am. Um, and yeah, peace and love.